Hi, this is Bart Polson. This video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, and click on Read the Free HTML Online, that'll take you to the table of contents. You gotta scroll up a little bit. In this exercise, uh, in this video, we're gonna be looking at exercise 25, which he calls Even More Practice. If you click on that, it'll take you to this page. Now, there's not an enormous amount of code here, but conceptually, this is there's some stuff that's pretty big here because we're doing something fundamentally different from what we've done before. And it can be a little hard to figure out how to even start this one. Now, typing the code is not difficult. We're defining functions. But one of the things you may notice as you go through it is we're only defining functions. There is no actual execution in this. but Zed wants us to do that. On the other hand, we're gonna be executing in Python and not from the command line the way that we've done every other time. So what I've done is I've put this all into Text Wrangler and I'm, I've got a lot of comments on it and then I'm gonna run through all of the executions that Zed talks about plus a few al um, alternatives. So here's the first thing. I've just got an explanation here that what we're creating here is a module. Now, you know that we've imported modules before, for instance, to get uh, argv, the argument variables. Those are modules we imported. We're gonna create a module, and then we're going to call it and use it to perform some you know, functions. Um, one of the things is we're gonna call it ex25, and when you call it, you do not put on the .py or you get an error message. I'll show you that when we get to it. And we're gonna run through the definitions that Zed created, and then I've got a ton of instructions at the bottom where I run through everything one step at a time. Okay, here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna define a function with you know def, and then it's, it's going to be called break words. And then stuff, uh, this means it takes one argument and you have to provide some sort of variable there and it will read it as stuff. That's the, in, that's the name of the variable internally in the function. You don't have to call it that. And then this right here is a short explanation of what the function does. I'll show you later that if you type uh, help for the function in Python, you'll get this text back. And this is what it does. Oops, excuse me. Now what it's going to do here is it's going to take this one argument, that's the variable name, you know, for instance, the sentence, the name of the sentence that we just applied, and it's going to use a built-in function called split. And that's one that already exists in Python. We don't have to create that. And what this means is you kind of tell it what to split things on. If you wanted to split it at commas, you would put a little comma there. If you wanted to split on tabs, you would put the symbol for a tab there. We're going to be splitting on blanks, on spaces between words. And that's actually pretty reasonable because in English, we put spaces between the words. Now, it means you know, the punctuation will carry over, but that's not a big deal. So we're going to take our uh, thing that we supply, which internally is known as stuff, we're going to use the built-in function split, we're gonna split it on spaces in the text, and we'll feed that into an object called words. And then what this function is going to do is it's going to return an object called, it's going to return words. Now, please note, it doesn't print it, it doesn't do anything. Again, when you have a return, what that does is it makes it available for other functions. So if you wanna feed that into a variable or if you wanna print it, you can call it and you can do that and the information is there. But on its own, it doesn't uh, go any further than simply calculating this. You have to find some way to manipulate it or display it. All right, then we're gonna do another function that's called sort words. And notice this one's interesting because it it's its input is the output from this one, or rather, you can use it. These ones, they don't talk directly to each other. This is just the name of an argument, but we tend to take, uh, in Zed's demonstrations, we take the results of this first one and we feed it into the second one. And we've got our little explanation that it sorts the words. And again, it returns something. It, it uses a built-in function that's called sorted and it's going to sort the words that we have and it's gonna return it. And again, that means it doesn't print it, it makes it available for other functions. Then we we're going to create a function called print first word. So you give it a bunch of words 
And what it's going to do is it's going to find the very first one. That's what pop zero is going to do. It means go to the beginning of this list and then print that. So this one actually prints it. It will display the first word in the console. The other ones just return it and make it available. This one actually puts it out there. Similarly, we're going to do print last words using the built-in function pop. And the minus one means to go to the end of the line. And it displays it the same way. Then we have another one called sort sentence that we're going to create. And you, it, again, it takes a single argument. And this time you want to feed it an, an entire sentence. And it's going to use, um, now this is interesting. It's going to rely on a function that we've already done. It's going to use break words. Well, break words is one that we defined right up here. So it's, can, it's sort of a second order function. And it's going to read that into words, and then it's going to sort them, and then it will return a sorted list. And so what the difference is here is it does the same thing basically as these two, but it means it does it all at once. All right, after that, we'll have one called print first and last, and this is also going to use break words, and it's going to use uh, these print first word and print last word that we just defined, excuse me, that we just defined right here. And, you know, again, since this relies on the sorted words, it's, um, again, another sort of second order function. And you'll notice it doesn't say whether it prints or returns anything. That's because it relies on these functions. So break words, for instance, that's this one. It returns something, makes it available. Print first word actually displays it and print last word actually displays it. So we're going to have some information that's made available, some that's displayed. Then we have this function, print first and last in a sentence. Uh, excuse me, after it takes a sentence, it sorts it, then it prints the first and the last. So again, and it's, it's drawing on so the functions that we created above. Okay, I believe that's our last function. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort, I'm going to run through the instructions on how to work all this. Obviously, you need to save the file. I've got it saved over here in my scripts folder. And if you want to see it, there's the thing and there's all my comments at the bottom that I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. You save it and then you run it. Now, this one works a little differently. Let me show you the instructions here. First off, you want to start Python. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start Python by typing Python. Now you'll notice right now I'm in uh, this Bart dollar sign is the is the Unix or the command line prompt. We're, that's going to change in a second to the Python prompt. You see, so now it opens up my copy of Python. I'm using the Enthought Canopy distribution, and this the three arrows is the Python prompt. So the first thing we do is we start Python. The second thing we do is we import the module. Now again. That's the script that we created, but the way we do this is we just type in this information right here. We do import ex25. Do not do the .py or you'll get an error message. Uh, it's a little weird, I, anyhow. So we import that. Now you can't really tell that anything's happened because it just gives you the prompt again, but you didn't get an error message. Um, by the way, You'll see right down here, I've got this uh, ex25.py. When I ran this, as soon as I hit this command import, it created a new file called ex25.pyc. And that is called a Python bytecode document. And what it is, is if you're going to use this module again, it helps it load a little bit faster. On the other hand, the file's not necessary. You can delete it if you want, and it'll just recreate it the next time it goes through. But it, it is there sort of as a processing convenience for the language. All right, now we're going to create an object to work with. So that's our sort of our variable. And I'm going to use the string that Zed did. So I'm going to create an object uh, called sentence, and I'm going to assign to it this text, all good things come to those who wait. It's in quotes. So there we go. And just in case you want to see it, once it's loaded, if you just type its name, there it is, so we know it's in there, it's in the memory. Now I'm gonna come over here 
and we're going to run our first function. The first one was break words, and this is how I'm going to do it. The way that Zed did is he's going to create a new object called words, and he's going to assign to it sentence, but running the function. And the way you call the function right now, I'll show you there's actually a shortcut way to do it, but we're going to do it this way for right now is you do EX25 to indicate the module that you're pulling it from. And then there's the dot operator to say, and then this function. And we're gonna apply it to that object and we're gonna feed it into this object. So it, you know, it's kind of long and circuitous, but I'm gonna hit return. And then if you wanna see what it actually looks like, you can do this, type words. And now you see it's got a, um, a list here of of every word now split into its own thing and separated. So um, on the other hand, it is possible to do this in one uh, fell swoop if you want. You don't have to use the intermediate variable, although we're gonna use it in some other things. I want you to just be aware that you can also do this. Print EX20. Uh, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say print and call the command. Notice I'm not feeding it into an object called words and I'm not printing words. I get the exact same thing. So if you don't need to save it for use later, this might be a faster way to do it. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run sort words. We're gonna feed that into an object also, a little variable, sorted words, where we use ex25.sort words, and we're gonna apply it to words. So that's this list that we just created. We're gonna do that. And if you wanna see what the results look like, you can, just type in that, and now you see that they're in alphabetical order. Okay. After that, we're gonna run print first word. Now this is one um, that actually has a print in its command. In fact, if I come up here, you'll see it. Print first word. This one includes print, so it's gonna actually show it to the console. The other ones had only had return, so you had to do something if you wanted to see the results. So there's the first word, and it's coming back up to this one that's in uh, the order of the sentence. All good things come to those who wait. But we can do this one now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna print last word. Again, same thing except it shows the end. Print last word. And again, I call it by doing ex25.printLastWord, and then I I, my one argument is I tell it what to, to pull it from, and we're using this one words that we created. And there it is, waits at the end. All right, now we're gonna do uh, sort sentence. Now, I, I need to make a quick thing here. In Zed's instructions on his web page, let's see here, he's running it through. Um, we're doing sort sentence, and I should be able to find this. He calls it sorted words. He feeds it into sorted words. I think that might be a mistake because he's been labeling everything else by the name of the function. So I'm actually gonna call it sorted sentence. Let's see here. Sorted sentence, okay. Hit return and then if you wanna see the object. Um, by the way, you can tell I'm just copying and pasting. There it is. Now. Here's the deal. This looks exactly the same as sorted words. The difference is sorted words was a two-step process. First, we split everything into words, then we sorted it. So we had to call two different commands or two different functions. This is a single function. Now, the trick, of course, is it's a, it's a single function that calls on the other functions. So it actually does the two functions, but it does them internally. And so, so it makes it a little easier for you to deal with. Okay, next we're going to run the command, uh, which is print first and last words. I'll just come down here and hit that, and all wait. So it's calling, it's going to the original sentence and all is the first word and wait with the period is the last word. And then the, um, the last function we're gonna call right now is print first and last sorted. And so what this one does is instead of going back to the original sentence, it goes to the sorted list. And anyhow, 
And so you see, it starts with all, because all is not only the beginning of the word in alphabetical order is the first one, but who is the last word when you go in alphabetical order? Okay, now there's just one or two more things I want to explain. Uh, you can get help on your own information. So look, if we're in, excuse me, if we're in Python, you do help, you'll we'll do EX25. And watch what happens. You get a couple of things. First off, you get this description, and that is just this block of text that I put at the top. That's convenient. And then for each of the functions, you get it says what all the functions are, and it gives their text. That's the stuff that's in triple quotes here. I can scroll through the whole thing. I'm going to hit the space bar, and now we're at the end. Yeah. So there's all our stuff in triple quotes. We have a total list of the functions, the arguments they take, and, and basically what they do. But again, we provided that information. I'm going to hit Q to quit this. And I want to show you that you can also get function uh, help on a specific function. So, for instance, we can type in this. It's this. So this says, go to the module EX25, but give me help for just this one function break words. And now you see it, it gives us just that one function's name, its argument, and, and what it does. And I'm going to press Q to get out of there. All right, nearly done. Now, um, there is a shortcut way. I mentioned earlier, you see how we've been typing the EX25 at the beginning of everything? There's a way that you don't you can avoid doing that. And what it is is sort of a way of telling Python, everything I'm going to use, use these functions from EX25. Now, um, what this is going to require is that I import it a little differently. So I'm actually going to quit Python, and you do Q-U-I-T, and then the open and close parentheses to quit Python. So now that's gone, I'm going to clear the screen by doing Command K. I'm going to start over just for a moment. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do the import in a slightly different way. Instead of saying import EX25, which is what I did last time, I'm going to do from EX25 import star, that's an asterisk. And that means import all of the functions. But when you do this, you get, then don't have to specify the EX25 at the beginning of everything. So for instance, now I can do this. Instead of having to put uh, ex25 dot, I can just do print break word sentence. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I first have to load the sentence. Let me get the sentence back in there. Let's see here. Because when I uh, quit Python, that left the memory. So I'm gonna first, Oops. Okay, I'm just going to let that screw up. Now I'll put in the sentence. And now I can run it by doing print break words. Voila, I didn't have to specify the EX25, so it's slightly simpler. And the very last thing I want to say is uh, just remember to quit Python, Q-U-I-T, and parentheses, and you're done. So it's a very long exercise. There's a lot going on there, but these are functions and approaches that are going to be very helpful in the future. So hope you're able to follow all of that, and I'll see you in the next exercise.